Welcome back to these lectures on sparse sampling and reduced order modeling. And I want to highlight one more uh, lecture here on how to think about principled architectures for sparse interpolation uh, that we might use for building reduced order models. This is section 12.4 out of the book uh, Data Driven Science and Engineering. You can find everything here at databookuw.com. So we want to again get to this idea of building a reduced order model, which is to take the high dimensional system and find some surrogate model, which is much smaller dimensional. Here's the mathematical architecture we've been talking about over the last several lectures, which is some PD system that was discretized into some high dimensional uh, state space representation U. Uh, have some linear components, nonlinear components. You project into some subspace V of R that we find from VSVD, so these are the POD modes, and then you get a R-dimensional system of equations representing, which is a proxy for the N-dimensional system of equation. This is much cheaper to run. Again, the subspace projection is not hard, except for the evaluation of these nonlinear terms now is extremely expensive unless you find a way to interpolate the measurements here, right? Because otherwise you're having to take a bunch of inner products of the high dimensional state space vector, which means you don't really have a reduced order model until we figure out how to sample this and interpolate this. We've talked so far about this gappy POD methodology from Everson and Sirovich, uh, and that was really sort of thinking about doing random sampling to compute these inner products. Uh, and in the last lecture, I talked about a principled architecture developed by Karen Wilcox, a couple of algorithms there that provide principled architecture for figuring out what are the best sampling interpolation locations that actually help us compute this much more efficiently with low error. Um, we also want to talk about one other architecture because remember the sam sparse sampling really comes from the fact that we're going to take the state space projected into its low dimensional representation with a measurement matrix, and I've got to figure out how to build this P matrix. That's really what the whole game becomes now is, how do I construct a P matrix? How do I tell it which rows of the identity I should use to sample my state space? So that's, that's what you're trying to pick out with this, and so that you can do the best job possible when you think about representing your solution in this low dimensional basis. Okay, so I want to talk about the measurement the, the method today developed out of George Karniadakis' group out of Brown, uh, and it's a different uh, sampling routine that's principled. And all this is really going to gear towards is say, okay, how about we, they, they really propose this idea of sample the maximum variance of the positions. Okay, so in other words, you look at your, you look at your SVD modes, and you start thinking about where are they maximum and minimum. That's what's telling you something about the maximal variance, and use those as potential interpolation points. So, okay, that's, that's the whole construct here is discover where max and min happen on your SVD modes, place your sensors there. Because obviously if you have max and minimum on your, on your SVD modes, that's telling you something because the SVD modes are, are constructed by maximal correlation. So that's telling you there's a lot of correlation there, a lot of stuff happening there. Put a sensor there. So you place R sensors initially, and what you do is you randomly select them from the maximum of these POD modes you're using. So if I'm doing an R mode expansion of POD modes, I look at all the max and min across all the R modes, place initially the R sensors there, and place additional sensors if you need to. That's, that's, the, that's the whole construct of the algorithm. So recall that we've been doing everything with Everything just as an exemplar uh, from these harmonic oscillator modes, and here they are. Here are the uh, 10 modes of the harmonic oscillator, and they are ortho orthonormal. And you can already see from this peak color where the max and minimum are. And so, in fact, what I do here with this matrix is I'm showing you the white dots are the locations of the max and mins of these modes. So, in other words, one way to think about it is from this architecture, I want to place sensors wherever there's maximal variance, and at least from these modal structure I've looked at, everywhere you see a dot, it's either where a max or a min of the variance happened. 
So those are my potential locations for interpolation in this algorithm, right? So those are the ones I want to select for, from, okay? So of course, if I give you R sensors, this is, there's, if R here is 10, there's a 10, pick 10 modes, 10 sensor locations randomly from those white dots, okay? Some of them, of course, are repeated, like for instance here, this one, these, this max shows up over and over again, so it's a repeat point, but all the other ones, I believe, are in fact at unique locations. So you're gonna, you have lots of options, you're gonna pick 10 out of those options. So it's random, but it's also constrained, right? So that's the that's the important thing here. It's constrained to uh, locations that have maximal variance. That's that's what you're going to do here. So in fact, I show you this. Here's a number of uh, here's a number of uh, different examples. I do a hundred different trials of randomly sampling with, I believe, uh, ten locations uh, picked from the max. Uh, I select 10 sensors from those white dots randomly 100 times, and here are the results across these trials. So you see, you know, I look, at, you can get quite a bit of variability. Notice that you do have some choices of this, even if you pick these maximal vary locations. Some of them occasionally don't do so well, but on average, it doesn't have too much variability, and the error is fairly low. Uh, same thing with the condition number. You do get some that have high condition number, but again, compared to just straight random sampling, this is quite an improvement. And as the algorithm suggests, you would initially pick those random ones and just add more as you go along, okay? And that will crush the error down. And so here's kind of what you might find when you do this. Uh, so. If I go ahead and take the max of each mode, uh, so this is this is going to give you the error here. So so what you're looking at the error and the condition number, and I'm going to show you a few different things. I'm going to show you out of here. There's five. So A, B, C, D, and E. So E is the best that you can do. I had full state measurements. Okay, so that's sort of the best you're gonna. That's that's what you're striving to do. Uh, let's start off with uh, D, uh, of all those realizations I did of randomly taking the best, you know, 10 out of the possibility, possible locations of tops and bottoms, they're almost indistinguishable. Here they are. Here's the five best, five best, okay? So uh, when, you, when you start looking at there's a lot of good possibilities there of the five best, and then what you look over here is where you do not so well. Um, Okay, so if I take the max, so by the way, the, the D here, right, is the best performance of 100 realizations. C is 20, 20 random sensors from the extremum. So that's C. That's using 20 sensors. This is using 10 sensors. And then B is the maximum of each mode for 19 sensors. Okay, so I just give you some, some diagnostics here. So in other words, part of the sampling strategy that is advocated is to oversample, right? Put down initially the R sensors, but then oversample that. And so, you know, if I put down R sensors just randomly, here's, here's what you might do. But then if I just lay more sensors down, I drop to here, and which does as well as if I had picked the best performers out of this random realizations, which I, which I showed you here, okay? So this strategy has a lot of different ways to slice it and use it effectively, but you can see here part of the success strategy is if you don't have the option of doing lots of random trials to pick out the best locations, you can oversample to just drop your error down significantly um, as you go. So this is, a, again, another principled strategy. Uh, and you know, notice that this principled strategy that's here sort of is a hybrid between uh, both making use of information that you have about the system that the maximum and minimum variance of these modes are somehow important to think about, that they have a lot of, these are good positions to be measuring because that's where a lot of variability is happening, so maybe put a sensor to measure it. But of course, you're also making use of random because you don't measure at all those locations. 
you measure as some random subset of good potential candidates. So it's this marriage of randomness with principledness together in, in, in a nice effective way. And again, just another architecture for thinking about how to overcome the difficulties with that interpolation problem of fixing the interpolation so that you can do the best job possible for doing the reduced order model. More details can find here, databookuw.com, full set of notes. All the code used to generate those plots was there, so you can take it and run it and play around with uh, random sampling and reconstructions as you'd like.